Welcome to February's uh, community chat. Um, welcome to Affirmations and to our beautiful building. Um, since it's kind of a small group, we're gonna um, kind of be informal um, to kind of keep the dialogue friendly and um, and kind of got, keep the dialogue going. So we'll we'll kind of um, just uh, kind of not be as formal as we have been on, in the past. But I did want to catch up the community on some certain bullet points, and then we'll open it up to discussion. In addition, we're going to try something different this time, which is if there are any um, community members that are with us via Facebook Live, that and if they have any questions, they can uh, type in their questions, and Kyle is going to write them down, and we're going to take some time at the end to um, to address those questions. So, Kyle, I know you're you're on it over there. <laughs> um, so we'll start off with introductions first. Um, my name is Mike Flores, and I am the president of the board. Cheryl Sack. Sherman, Board of Directors. Ellen Malcolm, community member. Uh, Stu Palmer, Outpost Management. Daniel Van Ville, applicant for interim executive director position. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that um, we always like to do as board members is to thank the community. So once again, um, we have shown, or the community has shown, that they are supporting the initiatives that Affirmations is taking and that they believe in the in Affirmations as a whole. So once again, we want to thank all the community members have been, who have been involved uh, with us in the last couple of weeks, um, especially as we transition. But once again, I think that this signals that the community believes in Affirmations, believes in its mission, excuse me, its vision and mission, and believes in the direction that we're going in. So I want to take that opportunity to thank the community. In addition, I also want to take the opportunity to thank our staff members. Um, our staff members, again, continue to step up to the plate, go above and beyond of what's, being, uh, what's required of them to really make sure that um, every community member that comes to our center feels welcome, feels that they are in a safe space, and that we're able to address their, 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 their needs when they enter this, this building. So once again, I, I want to acknowledge and recognize our awesome staff. And a round of applause for that. <laughs> um, so last time we spoke, we did speak about numbers, and so it's always a, of interest to everyone who, who, who is involved at Affirmation. So once again, I want to confirm for everyone that we have not touched the cash reserves, or excuse me, the reserves um, that uh, Affirmations has. So when we announced the restructuring in um, November, we said that we had approximately $60,000. Um, in January, we confirmed that we had $58,000, and I today again in February am saying that we have fifty-eight thousand dollars in reserves. So we have not touched any funds from reserves as we transition during this period. In addition, we have approximately one hundred and forty thousand dollars in the BFF fund, and those funds are at that. We haven't uh, spent anything yet from the BFF fund. I know we have some expenses that we'll, we'll do, uh, that we will um, pull from for um, just some structural things here in the building. But uh, we still are in the $130,000 um, range. In addition, uh, we said that in um, January, we had raised about $90,000 in donations and in commitments from the community. And in February to date, so since January 10th through now, we have about uh, $20,000 in commitments and donations as well. Steve, do you have a question? The 90000 was this. So December through January 10th, we had raised $90,000 in donations and, and commitments. And since January 10th to now, we have about we have raised about an additional $20,000 in uh, donations and commitments. So again, the, a, a continued signal from the community that um, affirmations is relevant, affirmations is important, and that our vision and mission does resonate with the community. So again, that speaks, uh, that's definitely heading in the right direction. Um, something else that we spoke about was community partners, and we continue to have dialogues with the community partners in terms of where there are potential synergies that we can share, um, uh, we, can, we can share on to make sure that we are, that we are able to meet the, our ambitious and missions for, to support the community. So those dialogues do continue. Nothing, nothing has been formalized yet, nothing has been agreed on, but those dialogues do continue with several community partners um, to again, see where those, uh, those uh, synergies do exist. Um, in terms of the interim leadership, so the, the board has tasked itself 
to identify an interim leadership by the beginning of March. Um, several people have stepped up to the plate, as you can see. <laughs> Somebody, um, several community members have stepped up to, to the plate. Yes, yeah, so what we're so what we're doing, um, Ellen, is that we're trying to identify a, a, a candidate or, or a group of people who will be able to lead the organization while we transition. So in this episode, when we restructured in um, in November, the board went from a governance board to a management board, where we took on basically the ED role. As you know, as most people would recognize, recognize that that's unsustainable. What we need is that we need a dedicated person or group of people who can do the day-to-day -day operations while we transition out, and also help us identify who the next leader, who the next ED is. So this is a best practice that has been done across the nation with other organizations that have gone through crises. And the reason being is because you want a transition team that focuses on a crisis and takes us out of a crisis, and then what you want to do is you want to identify an individual who is basically an operational expert, and that's really what an ED, an expert ED, will, will, is, is dedicated to, 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 to do. Um, so right now, we're, we, the board has tasked itself that by the beginning of March, we would identify a transition team that will deal with the day-to-day -day operations and help us solidify the strategy moving forward. In terms of well, yeah. So that's part of the, the budget for affirmations. So I mean, it's like any you would pay them like you would any ED. So it would be part of a, set of a salary uh, obligation in our budget line, and we would we would continue to fund uh, seek funds to be able to support our salary obligations. And part of the mission is also to um, help us improve upon raising funds. So you know we're coming into spring bash, which is a huge a huge <laughs> You can use that, Steve, if you'd like. Um, <laughs> our largest fundraiser, um, and so part of their job. In, Yeah, so, so again, so what we've done, so what the board has done is taken on the development role and has really gone out there and basically seeked and sought out approximately about $120,000 to help us um, meet our, our obligations, uh, and one of them being salary. And some of that is commitments, as Lynn mentioned, so it's not cash back in the bank right now. No. Um, it's coming in through maybe our center partners Correct. or uh, plan giving where they would have grown with us the year. But it has allowed us to, as I said in the community, I wouldn't say that we're in the dire crisis that we were in when we had to do the restructuring, but we're certainly not out of the woods. But we're past that kind of panic, can we make payroll situation. So that has eased. Um, we're certainly not out of the woods yet, but um, we have been able to raise funds that we can kind of say, okay, now let's breathe a little bit and see what we can do. Correct. Correct. Um, in addition to um, continued conversations with our interim, interim leadership is that we have had discussions with uh, community members who have stepped up and basically said that they're subject matter experts in certain areas and want to volunteer their time to help us. So those dialogues do continue. So you may remember from the last community chat, we identified several areas that we're looking for um, volunteers in, um, areas from grants to volunteerism to technology, um, staff development, communications, programming, building, the Spring Bash event, and development in general. And again, several community members have stepped up, given us their contact information. Those contact points, or touch points have um, started, and we're just trying to finalize in terms of how we're gonna move forward with those key individuals who have, uh, again, stepped up, come to the calling, and said, we, are, we have a certain level of expertise in these areas, and we want to help um, affirmations out. 
So once again, the community, the community continues to support affirmations in so many different capacities beyond um, just the financial aspect, which of course is always welcome, but um, also in so many different ways to really um, help us as, as, as we move forward. Uh, let's see, I think that's all that I had. I think that's all that we discussed last time. Um, again, I just want to continue to thank our, our board who continues to um, to really um, support um, the kind of the operational aspects of affirmation. So I know two of the three key members were here almost on an everyday basis. Um, Cheryl and Anthony and Tim, who's not here this evening, um, have really stepped up to the plate in terms of making themselves available um, to the staff and as the needs require from, from the community. So Cheryl, Anthony, and Tim, thank you so much for, for support as we transition. Um, something that I did want to touch on as well is Spring Bash. So as Cheryl um, mentioned, Spring Bash is our one of our largest fundraisers. It's on March 30th at the MGM Casino and Hotel um, at 6 p.m. starts at 6 p.m. Um, we invite people to purchase tickets online. We invite people to really um, come out and show the support that they have shown us thus far, but to continue to show the support, especially that evening, which is our largest event, our largest uh, gala event, fundraising event. Um, go ahead and see. Um, how late will people be able to sell up buy the tickets for the event? The week before, leading up to the week before the event, because I have to give a count to MGM about two days before, so. Okay, so about, about, about so probably Friday, 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 yeah. Friday, Friday, Friday. 22nd. Yes. The 22nd. Okay, so March 22nd is the last day to... Don't wait till the last day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> March 22nd will be the last day. Of course, if uh, there are special circumstances, of course, reach out to us and we'll, 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 we'll definitely accommodate. But if, we, if people can purchase tickets by the 22nd, that would be greatly appreciated. In addition to just being our, our, our yearly uh, gala event, this year is significant because we're celebrating 30 years as an organization. And that is significant, that's a, a huge and a significant milestone for any organization, but specifically for Affirmations, which truly is a community center. Uh, we still have the founders um, uh, uh, as, as leaders in other organizations. And if you may remember, um, Affirmations started in someone's basement as a, help, uh, as, as a common center. And really with the progress that has been made over the last 30 years, going from someone's basement to the arts building just down the road, and then to 10 years ago where we got the community to step up and said we wanted to, we wanted to truly have a, a presence, we wanted, to be, we wanted to have a landmark building in, in a vibrant area, and the, in, in, what, in what came to fruition here, which is a 17,000 square foot building, which really is the, the center for LGBT, the LGBT community, and not only here in, in the Metro Detroit area, but throughout, throughout Michigan. Um, so again, celebrating 30 years of, of history, but more importantly is celebrating the future and where Affirmations is going. And we, we're, we're, we're excited about that evening. Uh, we have several special announcements that are hopefully be coming out in the next couple of weeks in terms of who will be there, um, in terms of what the future looks like. Um, so we're, we're excited and we hope the community is there to, to be there with us to, to celebrate some of the announcements that we'll be making that, that, that there are still sponsorship opportunities, um, so table sponsorships and all different sorts of sponsorships, and the opportunity to donate items for the silent auction, um, our, our gift, our bags that we do, all, everything. So. so, so many ways to participate. Yes. So many ways to participate. Um, and, uh, Anthony, I know you're on, on the committee. Anything else that you want to you want to highlight about Spring Bash? Buy tickets. Buy tickets. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, I think there's a tendency a lot of times for people to wait till the last minute. We'd really appreciate it if you would, um, if you are planning on coming, is to buy your tickets now so we can really start getting an accurate headcount of how many people are coming in. Uh, the opportunity for the silent auction as well as our live auction, we are always in need of the bigger ticket items that we're going to get, you know, a better uh, a bid on during our, our auction time. So that would be helpful. Uh, sponsorships, the sp sponsorships start out at $2,500. Uh, so, I mean, there's a very, a whole lot of opportunity to get involved. And if you have any other questions, uh, give Kyle a call. And he'll be able to answer everything for you. Any questions? Of, any other questions? I'm sorry, I'm just pulling out my email because I did want to read out an, an e a text that I got um, from, a, from a previous leader of ours. 
So one of the things that the board has, um, has focused on is um, besides just doing our board meetings and our community chats, which is a, a great way for, for a dialogue to, to occur, we've also taken the opportunity to meet with, some, with um, community members on a one-to-one -one basis, um, doing touch points with several ex-community leaders, um, just to see if there was an opportunity to, um, to discuss our ideas, um, learn from them, their experiences since, since they, they have institutional knowledge. And one of the uh, previous uh, leaders that we reached out to was uh, David Garcia. Um, he used to be an ED here in, uh, at Affirmations. He is now the Director of Policy at the LA LGBT Center. And uh, reached out to him as, as, uh, and kind of bounced different ideas just to get his, his perspective. And he sent us this quote. And it says, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike Flores at the recent Creating Change Conference in Detroit. I remain friends with Dina and Paula on the current board, and we have, and ha excuse me, and have been greatly impressed with Cheryl as well. The hard work and vision of the current Affirmations Board is absolutely key to Affirmations' future. They are trying hard and need the community support now more than ever. Affirmations and the Greater Michigan LGBT community remain near and dear to my heart and I will continue to do whatever I can to help. And um, I think what that signals is that as we're reaching out to our previous leaders and other legacy leaders, is that as we share with them what we've done, what we're doing, and where we're going, they're validating what, uh, what the board is doing. Because as, as everyone knows, we are a relatively young board, and we don't have a lot of institutional knowledge. But as we reach out and bounce ideas, they're saying, no, this is exactly what I would be doing, or this is the direction I would be taking. So again, I think that it reinvigorates us as a board to, um, to have that level of support from previous um, EDs, previous leaders, and, and also from the community, because we've heard it from the community as well. Um, so I think that's all I have. Is there anything else that the board would like to, to share? Okay, then I guess there's any questions. Uh, new finance director. We touched on that. We did. So one of the calls uh, we made, uh, no, let me back up. When we made the calls to the community um, saying, hey, we need help in different areas, after one of those community chats, a community member stepped up and said, hey, I have a finance director. Um, and I'm looking to find something that's part time. And she sent her resume in. It was far, she has far more experience than we were even looking for, so it was a great opportunity for us. Um, we met with her, we talked with her, it was a good match, and so she now is a part-time um, accountant for us. And so she's been training with Angela, Angela's been fantastic in helping us with the transition. They've met and trained several times, and um, she's now more part-time. As a permanent or a transitional? You know, when we, when we made the offer, we said temporary, um, hoping that it would turn into permanent, but just because we weren't quite sure what was happening, we made the offer temporary. She's doing a fantastic job, and the knowledge she brings. She has a nonprofit background and uh, finance background. It's been fantastic. All right. Thank you for Thank asking. You. Sure. And uh, there was another um, community member uh, who was also helping, I guess, with uh, your databases, and that was also a result of yes. that. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. How that yeah. came about? Or? Yeah, so similar to, um, to with, with Julia, yeah, is that we put a calling out there. We asked if there was uh, people who were expert in certain areas, um, and this community member stepped up and said, "I have an expertise in databases," which is one of the one of the one of the challenges that we identify um, in, in house. And he's been working with us now yeah. for several weeks. Yeah, he has helped us. He's helped yeah. us combine yeah. um, the list that we had, mostly with donor lists, um, in different spots. He's Streamline it and you know eliminate duplicates and things like that. That's really helpful. So. And there seems to be on social media a, a recent push for volunteers that you know, uh, with limited financial resources you can only pay people so much, but you're welcoming volunteers. To Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Especially those I mean, volunteers in general, of course, but especially. Have any grants been written in the last, you know, since since the restructuring? So what we focused on um, so far is focused on the current grants that we have and making sure that we're able to focus.
fulfill those grants. So that's what we've been focused on. Um, so again, one of the committees that we're setting up is a grant committee, and we've identified two people who have expertise in grant writing. Um, so that's the next step, is to start to identify and writing um, uh, grants. And one of the things is uh, that, we're, that we're focused on is making sure that the people who are involved in grant writing are local, um, because previously we've worked with people who are not local to the area or more outside, who were experts, but really didn't under, truly understand um, the affirmation's background. And with these two people who are uh, local to the area, our community members, um, have an, an interest in affirmations, I think that hopefully that will yield much greater success in the grant writing process. Yeah, good questions. So the center is still viewed as a place to call if you need that sort of training. Um, and I can speak to just uh, three or four our occurrences that just happened in the last two weeks where uh, a major healthcare system reached out to us, a uh, major nonprofit has reached out to us, and a major corporate partner has reached out to us. And so again, the center is still viewed as the, the, the center. That's what I mean, I'm just concerned about fulfilling that need. Well, you should be concerned because what we've done is that we're trying to improve on what was previously done. And again, Ian and Heather have really looked at, at, at the training, at the courses, at the modules, and said, this was good, how do we build upon, um, how do we build on that? And, and it's a continuous improvement cycle for them. So, um, so we're excited. It's a good point, though, yeah. because it was one of the concerns that we had um, when we did restructuring, is what about our training? So it is a good point. It shows that you know what you're doing as well, but um, they have stepped up and really did a great job. Actually, one thirty-six, yeah. six and change, something yeah. like that. So we will be using some of the money, and we already had it earmarked to move um, to the business development that needs to be here. But yep. just to, so that you know, we have a process. Um, so it is in a separate account. We keep it restricted, and then um, if we need to use it, the board goes through a process of saying yes, this truly is the intent. At this point, it's our intent because we are the ones who decided to keep it restricted. We could use it for operations, but knowing that we have an aging so we really say yes, this truly is um, in the spirit of the BFF funds, and yes, we need to use the funds for that. And so to Ellen's point, what, what are some of yeah, we'll let the, the, the research activities that we've had? Well, I think some of the improvements I'm probably going to tell you is that the um, entire facility is now under CCTV monitor, and the CCTV monitor is also available at the reference desk, so anybody going into different parts of the building, they can actually pull the camera system up to see where they're going, what they're doing, and how it's being accessed. Uh, the staff also has remote viewing capabilities, so they can go on their laptop, pull it up, they're upstairs. Uh, Kyle has one on his PC where he doesn't have to leave the office. If he thinks there's, you know, so he gets a call that there might be something going on, he can just call it up at his desk, take a look around, see what's going on. Uh, we had an incident in the downstairs restroom that may have been an act of vandalism. I haven't been able to exactly prove or disprove that, uh, but that is something that we're looking into, and if it does indeed prove to be an act of vandalism, I will be following forward with uh, probably a police report just on a suspicious incident. Um, I 
other than that, the building's still pretty sound. We still have a problem with water in the basement, but until we get rid of the snow and ice, I really can't investigate what's going on with that any further until we get that cleaned out and really take a look at the building. I've had the city of Ferndale out, uh, Department of Public Works. Uh, they expressed a couple of opinions as to what they think might be causing the flooding in the basement. Um, but again, until the weather warms up and we dry everything out, it's kind of hard to, for us to get an estimate of what exactly is going on down there. I think other than that, we're in pretty good shape building-wise. Uh, there's just been some plumbing issue in the men's bathroom that was taken care of. We had uh, Harold Wholesale donate an actual commode, uh, so there really wasn't a whole lot of expense to that. So just other than just normal day-to-day -day maintenance and housekeeping, I think we're in pretty good shape right now. And the phone systems were upgraded? Phone systems were upgraded, repaired, yeah. Yep. Uh, we also had some work done. Has that been done yet on the media center? It's done. It's done now. I'll be uh, opening it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So we've had our uh, IT team come in and clean our computers, put up necessary uh, parental blocks on the systems to prevent people from using them inappropriately. Um, and as Heather said, the media center will be opened up tomorrow. Yeah, I think we'll have those up No questions yet, just a few comments, but no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Positive comments. <laughs> Yay! Well, we have the stand. There's an, oh, no, more, no more comments that say Kyle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, was that you? Was it was. I was just teasing Kyle. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> number 22. <laughs> 58. <laughs> So um, at 
the previous board meeting to that, and at several community chat meetings, there was community members who had questioned um, the, the, the role of the president or and some other board members. So we felt that it was necessary to um, show the community that the board had. Why well, I need to interrupt you for mm -hmm. when you said we, we felt it was necessary. Um, I recall that it was something that you brought up, and the board was kind of wondering what it was about. Nope, not at all. So there was maybe one. There was probably one board member um, who may have missed uh, reading uh, an email or something just because of her um, time commitment to, um, with her other obligations. But all the other board members uh, were aware that, uh, in fact, we had taken a vote of confidence previous to that, um, right after the transition, because I myself had volunteered to step down um, if the board thought it was necessary, and the board said no, um, that they wanted me to stay on. But again, with the calling of the community saying, hey, we have questions about the role of the president and, and what they're doing, we felt that it was necessary to once again publicly show that um, the board president had the full support of the board. So that's why that was done. So it was a little unusual, but we felt that it was necessary to again show the community that the leadership had the full support of the board, and you had the support of the board. The next scheduled board meeting is supposed to be on March 27th, mm -hmm. just a couple days before the spring batch. Yep. Do you foresee though um, the board possibly meeting before that? The full board now. So the schedule is laid out um, in advance. In fact, we approved the schedule in December. I think it was. Yeah, it's in December when we, when we approved the full schedule. So we don't anticipate anything outside of that. But you mentioned about a like possible interim leadership at the, at the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. How is is the uh, board meeting not needed to? Uh... So we have an EC meeting at the end of this month. So we have an executive committee meeting. And then if the board feels that it's necessary, we're allowed to vote um, in um, for another meeting. That doesn't, that doesn't have to be an open session because it's considered a personnel issue. And per our bylaws, we're allowed to have closed sessions with personnel issues. Before the March 27th meeting? So we have a, we have a scheduled DC meeting event this month. Right, right. Yeah. So as, outside of that, there's nothing that has been scheduled. And the EC executive committee is empowered to like in, uh, make decisions about interim yes. leadership. Okay. And I will also say, given the size of our board, even though only the EC is required to attend, almost all the board members attend. Um, all the EC meetings. Yeah, it's, it's not mandatory that they do, but because we're so actively involved and we're a small board, a, a lot of times we can call ahead, give or take. And we can call, as you well know, we can call a um, convened emergency meeting. We can do that over the phone. I mean, if something happens, we can call. Right. And we have done that, especially during the transition. Mm -hmm. right. Try not to. Try not to do too much. Sometimes we can't well, What's the bylaws say about votes of confidence? Just talking about the, the, the bylaws about that. What do you, um, do you know Robert's rules of order or says about that? So, as long as you bring up a motion, which is what was brought up, then you're able to vote on it. So we did a motion for a vote of confidence. And again, it was to basically show that the leadership from the board had the full confidence of the board. And if, I'm not sure what that showing or that display um, It's like a any vote of confidence that happens in any organization, whether it be in corporate America or whether it be a nonprofit. It's basically, it shows that the so leadership the has. Display before the community that the board supports. Mm -hmm. the board. Yep. So that's. Yes, early bird sales are closed. Closed. 
Yes. <laughs> but we did have a few more come in today, so I believe we're up to almost 32, I think. And last week we were at, um, I think, 28. So it's they're coming. Good. Yeah. And this tracks to um, what the, the the same buying pattern, right? The same Last buying year. pattern, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So most of the tickets are purchased about a week and a half to two weeks prior to the event. It's so difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm one of those. <laughs> 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 oh, another right. thing about the bash, we also have special pricing at MGM for hotel mm -hmm. if you want to spend the night. Uh, very good pricing for bash. Party all night long and go gambling and uh, go plop in bed the next day to go go to breakfast and brunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I will be doing. Well. <laughs> 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 and that code, it, when you buy the tickets, that code is there. So you yes. Can see that. It's right on our um, ticket page. It's on our website. You just click the link and it shows you exactly what you can get on MGM's website. Any questions? That's <laughs> Kyle, why don't you show Facebook fans your new haircut? He likes his spicy chocolate. All right, well, All right, once again, thank you. thank you so much. And I think the next uh, community chat will be announced shortly. Yeah.